Of Vitaliano, where I lived from 1928 to 1975. It's like the sunrise of the Nuggets. waiting for a mu museum to open I'm a little too early when it's a museum of architecture and urban life it's a very nice building actually a nice statue over here and a Catholic church which is Rare, but not uncommon. And this seems to be built on some kind of old structure. Seems to be some archives of some kind. Take a look at the church afterwards. I 
Lekas balcony, which seems very typical for their area. And looks like thinks they have some toilets. Which would be nice because I have to go. There's an elderly man, I guess he works here. Maybe he's a cashier or I don't know, maybe even a manager. He keeps smiling at me because I'm too early. Yeah, walking around filming, trying to kill some time. So evidently I'm allowed to go in now. You have to start at the top and work your way down. This is interesting. You can see how keys and locks developed over the years. I think the oldest is on the left and the newest on the right. And this is a showcase of what Gimri looked like at one time. Oh, it must have been end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, because the cathedral and the All Saviors Church are standing. And they were built in the 1870s and 1880s. I think it's pretty well done. These we're doing uh, pieces to a copper belt. Different links, you can see how they're connected. It's an almost perfect match. And this is what the finished belt looked like. They put the metal links on all of their base so you could wear it and close it. Look at these. The more jewelry. Blacksmiths and their tools. These are sheet metal workers, they're called tinsmiths. And some of their tools. They made roofs and um, um, things like that. Copper smiths. Made household articles. Foundries, there were special metal workers um, that made products of tempered steel. So, traditional historical clothing that men and women wore here in Kumri. So, 
these are some typical instruments. Music instruments that are played in Romania. And I guess these were some famous musicians or singers. I was just told the building, the museum is in. It was built in 1872. It um, belonged to a very rich family. Oh, a back on my table. And the museum took over the house. It's in its original state with original ceilings, floors, windows, doors, which is, I think is rather nice. All exhibits are 100, 150 years old. This, this is the typical living room with piano. was the same here in Armenia, but in the US and in Europe, they had um, official living and dining rooms where they um, would show off to their guests. It was a very um, what would I say? Um, they very highly decorated, expensive tapestries. Um, expensive furniture, things like that, to show off the wealth of the family. And then they had their private rooms, which were just normal rooms without the big decorations or the huge elaborate fireplaces. Well, <coughs> evidently, I'm finished with the museum. This is the entrance portal. Very elaborate tunnel. Archway. Now we're back outside. So, this is the Catholic Cathedral of the Holy Martyrs. Um, it appears to be very new, or rather new. Nice belfry.
So this is a Catholic church, but it resembles the main churches in the way it's built. It's nothing compared to um, Catholic churches you find in Europe. typical for a Catholic church. Go and do penance for your sins. So, the Pope was here at one time. In um, 2016. I imagine, I can imagine, which is also probably a reason that the Catholic churches look like Armenian Apostolic churches. First of all, they could be recognized as House of God. And secondly, because the Armenian churches are very stable, very well built. They can withstand earthquakes. Um, I suppose that is why. Maybe the Catholics just wanted to steal people who were Armenian Apostolic and convert them to Catholics. And the easiest way to do it was to make them think they were in an Armenian Apostolic Church. So. It's very well built, nice church. So, now I'm going to look at the Bovaris Shiratz Memorial House Museum. Bovaris Shiratz was a famous poet. Is this the house where he lived? Sure. No, didn't live. He died. 1983, uh, the house present, presented him, and 1984 he died. So this is not it was not his house where he lived. His birth house. It was just a. Uh, his uh, um, painter book. Okay. This was the house where he lived. Oh, seven children. He was a very busy man.
I assume that this house was restored to its original state because of the floors, the ceiling. That's the guess there's a monument for him and Gilmarie. So these are, I guess, are sculptures of Ara Shirots, the son of Hovanes Shirots. The city sculptures are quite abstract. I'm at the Black Fortress. Um, it was built by the Russian army. Of the, I think this the uh, built by the army of the Russian Tsar. Um, it was built as a defensive fortress against the Turks because it's very close to the Turkish border. It's up on a hill. Um, it took a decade to build, and it's called the Black Fortress because of the black stones it's made out of. never besieged so the fortifications were never tested um, but it solved it served a major role in every Russian Turkish war Beautiful view. Over the valley and Kumuri. This is a 
of the Armenia. So now we are inside the fortress. I think the roof and the stage we'll put in later for concerts and So, <clears throat> let's take a look around. Um, like I said, it served as a defensive fortress. First during the Russian-Persian War and then later um, as a defensive position against the Turks. Um, archaeolog ar archaeological diggings have shown that this part of Gimri is um, the part where the oldest civilizations were. Um, they found very ancient graves and tombs here in the hills between the Black Fortress and the Mother Armenia statue. And see, there were tunnels dug from the Black Fortress to the Red Fortress and to Mother Armenia. Engravings here in the walls from Russian soldiers that served here with their names and the date they were here and the cities they came from. But now it's used for cultural reasons, concerts, conferences. So I am at the remains of Marmish Monastery. Um, it was built during the 11th century. These are the three remaining churches. Uh, there should be some ruins of two other churches located nearby. It's about a 20 minute drive away from Gyumri. Um, it's abandoned, it's no longer in use. This is um, which is called Marmashen Vank in Armenian. And these are built using red tough stone. Seventh century Seven. grave. Grave, yes. Uh -huh. The church created by Dara Balavni, but architecture is the top. Who has been on the churches? Five kilometers from here is a border. Uh huh, yeah. 
to Turkey. Yes. This is the main Kirchi Seyipana. Another is Saint Stepanos, the small but the same churches. Another is Yes. It was built by Bahlabuni's grandson. Uh, he was a bishop. The name is Grigor. Yeah. And we have two parts of two very old. This is the seventh century British churches. The one over here on the hill? Yes. Yeah. Very old. And this is the century. One part was the ruins. Yes. You've been in here. Yes. In Yerevan, we have uh, the way. Zvartnots. Yes, uh, look like Zvartnots temple. I've been there. Yes. <laughs> yes. You are a guest. Very cool in here. Yes. yes. I want to sing for you the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, yes. thy name be hallowed. Thank you. I'm praying for you and you can listen the acoustic. Yes. I didn't expect someone to be here to explain the churches. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, that was very nice. Don't mention it, you are welcome. Are you always here? Always. Uh, I am an artist, I am making handmade works. You can see then my work. Okay, I will look. Okay. You don't see that very. It's a um, very unique experience. Very well sung. Okay, I'm not allowed to climb in the altar, so I can't go back in there and see what's in there. I think I will buy something from her. She made such an effort.
It's a nice little model of the churches. Oh, the coffee cup isn't part of it, I don't think. This is the remains of the Hachkars. I like these old churches. or if they are means from some structure but I presume that they are graves it looks like there was some engraving of some kind on them these churches need from the interior. it's Armenia's history it's part of their culture, part of their life Part of the identity. Armenians without their belief. That's I don't think that's possible. Their belief in God. And their language and their own alphabet. them through many, many, many hard times and occupations and uh, the Turks and Seljuks and Russians and they always believed and they always prayed and they kept their identity. And there's usually a small altar in here. Now, they still come to these old places to pray. That's why in most old churches it needs to find an altar of some kind with icons, with a cross, with candles. Right, but <laughs> very nice. Century church here built in the same way the Tzvartnots temple in Ichmiotzin was built. It was a round church. Um, okay, the outside part is round, but inside it had a cross form like all of the Armenian churches.